Internet. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Crack the Code, a show that aims to make you an informed investor. I'm Sumera Abdi. Over the last seven episodes, we've taken an in-depth look at a wide range of sectors like auto, BFSI, pharma, IT, infra and FMCG. So we've learned from the experts as to how best to analyze the investment opportunities in these sectors. Well, today we go one step further to understand where and how much you, the value investor, can diversify your portfolio to maximize returns and ensure wealth protection. To discuss this, I have with me Rajiv Thakkar of PPFAS, Gaurang Shah of Geojit and Sudeep Bandupadhyay. Gentlemen, thanks very much for joining in and welcome to the show. So my first question naturally is for a value investor, where do they begin? Right? So if a person has to go out today and start putting uh, money into active securities, what's the few two or three things that they should look at as also are there sectors or companies which are particularly suited to value investing? Well, I think, uh, Sumera, if you look at uh, value investing principle, the way we would recommend is there are four things which an investor should be cognizant of before investing in a particular company. Uh, one is, of course, the sector in which the company is op operating, whether the sector is rightly positioned, it's got a future potential, mm -hmm. and based on my multiple macroeconomic factors, whether uh, both in the country as well as globally, that sector is going to do well in the near future. Having identified this sector, I think the second thing comes identifying the company. You know, multiple companies operate in the same sector. There may be a difference in business model. There may be a difference in multiple areas. So you have to identify the company there. The third and uh, very critical thing is the quality of management. And I think uh, we believe it's one of the most critical factors. You have to back the good managements. So management quality is of great, great importance. Fourth, and of course, uh, the most important one can say is the valuation at which the particular company is trading at a particular point of time. You may have a great sector, great company, great management, but the valuation may be you know, uh, extraordinarily high. It may not be worthwhile picking up at that valuation. So I think these four factors one has to be cognizant mm -hmm. of. It's an interplay of these four factors mm. which should make you uh, or make an investor take the right decision. So just to add to Sudeep, uh, you know, risk profile yourself mm. because as we all know, equity investment as an asset class is a high risk, high return game. So you also have to understand that there are risks involved with equity investment and only and only if you have that ability to take risk should you venture into investing in equity market and along with what Sudeep said, uh, you need to be disciplined. Because if you're not disciplined, then the market is going to punish you very bad. Mm. So you understand all these things, be disciplined, have a long-term time horizon and know what you're doing, where you're doing and why you're doing. Mm. Okay, so it's interesting that you highlight discipline because if a person was to actually go out and follow all the principles, find the stock, research it well, uh, what if the stock has moved on since then? I mean, is there still a case to be made for a person to buy a good company at a higher price? Uh, so it comes to valuation and it comes to then timing. So, Sumira, I would say that anything, and I've always followed this principle, anything that is good will come at a premium, mm. and anything which is bad in the market will come at a discount. So, you have to see that the valuation, and one more thing you have to understand, Sumira, is that you don't have to go and deploy your entire capital at one show, mm. you know, one go, one shot. Like I said, being disciplined is also, you know, making investment in parts. Hmm. So, if you identify an opportunity and unfortunately due to certain reason if you're not able to deploy it at a lower valuation if the stock is gonna hmm. start investing, make a beginning because if you're going to wait for that right valuation or right type to come, possibly you not end up investing at all. So, make a beginning, make small baby steps and in parts initially start your investment. As it comes down, you have money, you can add to your portfolio and like I said, it will be a disciplined and systematic investment. Okay. That so, you take a small bet small so that bets. you at least start tracking Absolutely. that stock Absolutely. regularly. I'd like to go on just one small thing is that you know the moment you have identified a stock and the price has moved as you say it but you when you have identified you have a you have something in mind that okay mm. I have identified the stock yeah. the price of this should go to let's say take 200 mm. now the originally when you started researching mm. it was at 100 now it's moved to 150 mm. you have to still take that call that okay mm. I, I see this going up to 200 so I'll take mm. but if it has crossed 200 
then maybe you will hold back mm. because whenever you are investing in something you have something in your mind mm. whether you are articulating it or not you mm. definitely have a, some number some uh, something in the back of your mind so go by that because you have mm. uh, you are convinced about something you have in, you are planning to invest based on certain things stick to that mm. okay. let's like to add uh, mm. something here uh, see essentially it would depend on what your original thesis is mm. if you are Investing for a one-off pop, hmm. be it on account of a commodity, favorable commodity hmm. cycle or a policy announcement, hmm. then the entry price becomes very, very critical. Yeah. Then you don't have the room to pay up hmm. for the company. But if you are buying for a long-term compounding, hmm. then a 10 or 20 percent higher entry price may not matter much because you are anyway planning hmm. on holding it for maybe yeah. 5 or 10 years and you are really looking at the compounding effect coming in. So it really depends on what is the original thesis for buying the stock. Yeah, so this is a good um, example you brought up, Raji, because a lot of investors actually start off as investors become traders along the way. Some of them start off as traders, sometimes get stuck in a bad stock and therefore are left to hold it. Uh, what is the strategy then for an investor to actually when they buy a stock and they have to hold it for the long term, uh, what are the things that they don't have to do? You know, as opposed to just what do they have to do? Someone newly entering the market should not aspire to be an expert on all the maybe 3,000, 4,000 stocks that are out there. Select a few uh, companies, few sectors which are easy to understand mm -hmm. and develop competence, develop confidence over there when investing. The second point is that when you are going to buy a stock, there is no guarantee that the stock price cannot mm -hmm. go down. So, mm -hmm. if you are going to be shaken up or if you are going to lose confidence by every 5 and 10 or sometimes maybe even 25-30% mm. stock price move then you don't belong here. Mm. Uh, as long as your original thesis is correct, sometimes uh, a fall in stock price may be an entry point, a mm. point to add more rather than to get shaken out of your mm. position. And this is essentially the difference between a trader and an investor. An investor is looking to buy at a lower price whereas a trader is trying to follow the trend mm. and benefit from that. Yeah, a good case in point, in fact, the one we discussed recently last week on the show was uh, perhaps Nestle, yeah. right? At one yeah. point, nobody wanted to touch it. Yeah. But um, tell me, Gorang, is there no place for a stop loss then in a value investor's portfolio? Yeah. I mean, is that something they don't have to worry about because the company you've identified is strong on fundamentals? And in case there is a place at all, what is a stop loss in this term? In this term? So, Sumira, I believe stop loss is a terminology on technicals. Hmm. And long term investment is by and large based on the fundamentals. Hmm. So, I would not call it a stop loss. I would say risk taking ability if you are having a long term time horizon and buying a stock from a long term. And that's the reason why you risk profile yourself, the hmm. initial statement that I made. It's possible, it's, it's because you have to understand how much of risk you're going to want to take in an investment of a stock say of 100 rupees so if the stock you have a risk appetite and your downside the protection is triggers off at say about 10 20 percent mm. then 90 or 80 rupees you need to review as to why your investment has gone wrong mm. and to answer Rajiv's and just to point put that point forward what do you do after investment is to follow up your mm. investment mm. in terms of what is the earnings ability capacity of the company mm. in form of quarterly numbers in during the financial year, if the management is planning to do any kind of acquisition, organic, inorganic, um, uh, how it is going to work out. So all these things affect if the debt is high on the balance sheet, if the sub company is not. So you need to follow up on your investment and not just like a bank FD, invest and forget about it for next one year. Every quarterly and even as you get any information on a corporate on your investment, you need to track that up whether it is for good or for bad. So. Yeah. Possibly the trigger limit will depend upon an individual's risk-taking appetite and you need to risk profile yourself. How does one actually gauge a management's decision, right? Uh, for example, how does a value investor who's already bought a particular company, who's, which is fabulous in fundamentals, uh, how do they see events like, say, a QIP or a rights issue, or, for example, even fundraising activity otherwise, uh, raising debt, for instance? Uh, what kind of debt is good? What is not so good? All the management decisions which dilutes 
his, uh, 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 you know, the, the, the ownership, which is his shareholding percentage is coming down, or uh, the leverage in the company goes up, which is mm. debt raising. The, 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 the test there is with the money, mm. is the company going to earn incremental uh, income, mm. which is more than uh, proportionately more than what he was, uh, the company was earning with the existing pool of money. Mm. So if the company has uh, 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 potential to earn additional income, proportionately additional income with the incremental pool of money in case of debt after servicing the uh, servicing cost, I think it's a good decision for the company to go ahead. That's how people do leverage and people mm. say leverage is good uh, for a growing business. So I think that's the test. Uh, but investors, again, I would say that they should be very, very uh, uh, kind of clear as to why they have invested, what is the potential of the sector and the company and keep monitoring it as Gaurav said. Okay, so if you've identified uh, Rajiv a good company, um, how diversified should your portfolio itself be, right? So do you keep putting every incremental funds that you have into that good company which you've identified, which is performing well so far or do you keep finding new opportunities? This is an endless debate and this is <laughs> even among professionals. So there are uh, hedge funds who for example put 20-30% of their funds in one stock mm -hmm. and there are funds which have maybe 100 or mm -hmm. 200 stocks and at the outer limit index funds with 500 mm -hmm. stock positions. So what happens is when you are concentrated, when all your money is in one stock, if the stock goes up three times, your portfolio goes up three times. But similarly risk is very high. On the other hand, if your best idea is only 1% of your portfolio, even if it triples, yeah. your portfolio return is only 2%. So, uh, a lot of academic study has gone behind this and they have come to a conclusion that somewhere about 20 and 25 kind of stock positions give you reasonable amount of diversification without diluting your best ideas too much. So, basically, um, you have to stop your diversification at some point, right? Um, Gaurav, within this uh, basket of 20, 30 stocks, uh, how do you divide it between, uh, say, sectors? Yeah. Right or between uh, companies within uh, a particular sector itself. Warren Buffett also said that uh, wide diversification is only necessary when you don't know what you're doing. Mm. And if you know what you're doing, you don't need to have so many stocks. Mm. And I would rather take it from a point of view of what is the capital involved in equity investment. So I would put it like that. If you have 5 lakhs or rupees, hypothetically speaking, have 4 or 5 stocks, not more than that and then multiples of 5 lakhs thereafter, mm. it becomes manageable. Mm. If you have 20, 30 stocks and your capital is less, it becomes unmanageable and you may make a mess out of And even forget about three of us, nobody in the world will be able to help you out to make yeah. money in the stock market, <laughs> to be very honest. So look at the capital that you are investing in the market. Mm. And okay, on the question that you asked me, again, that will go back to the risk taking appetite. I would say, if you have a lack of rupees, divide it. 25% into four sectors. So you have a 25% equal weightage and you will. If you have a mixed bag of, say you are high t risk taking uh, kind of an investor, but at the same time you want to protect your capital, mm. then keep a mix of both. So you'll have a mm. uh, very well diversified, well balanced portfolio mm. to take a bet on from a long term point of view. Okay, so now that the portfolio has been, uh, uh, you know, well balanced, it's been decided, um, how often do you review it, Sudeep? I mean, should it be at the turn of a cycle, should it be annual, should it be quarterly, or should it be as and when your need for funds arise? Well, I think it should be slightly different, Sumera. Uh, it should be none, none of those which you mentioned. It should be uh, really based on events and based on the developments. If you're a value investor, I think the right way to make money is keep monitoring your stocks. Mm. If you're not monitoring your stocks and you decide to do it quarterly and things happen, things happen mm. on a daily basis, mm. you may lose out. You may lose out on an exit, you may lose out on an entry. So I don't think that's the right way. You have to keep monitoring your stocks so that whenever there is something which is actionable pertaining to the stocks you have invested in, is there uh, uh, there in the out, out in the market, you are aware of that. Mm. So that you can monitor and you can take your decision. So I don't think you should put a you know fixed period of a month, quarter, year and all that. You have to be at it. I'll tell you why I ask this. It's because on the one hand, value investors are told not to be trigger happy on a daily basis. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. And yet, if they're monitoring this uh, wide 
variety and influx of news that's coming in, it's difficult not to be trigger happy, right? So how do you actually, how, uh, how do you do it? There is a significant difference, uh, Sumera. Of course, there is uh, millions of pieces of news which is coming out. And if you have invested in, let's say, 25 companies, as Rajiv was suggesting, you have to identify what is important. Mm -hmm. Look. Let's say I have earned, uh, invested my hard-earned money in Infosys yeah. and there is something happening which is kind of game-changing in the technology sector. Everybody is talking about yeah. you, know, you know multiple things on the tech sector. I, I need to be aware. I need to be taking a conscious decision whether I should hold on, add to my position or exit my position. Mm -hmm. So I think it's important. Yes, uh, it's a challenge in today's day and you know flood of information but you have to do it if you have to do it right. Okay, so tell me Rajiv, uh, does high beta have any place at all in a value investor's portfolio? Uh, I'll quote Buffett again here. <laughs> he says, ignore anything with Greek alphabets. Beta is just a reflection of volatility, volatility. how volatile mm. a stock is mm. relative to the overall market. It does not give you any indication whether the stock is overvalued, fairly valued or undervalued. Hmm. I would recommend investors to go with fundamental valuation rather than worrying too much about high beta, low beta kind of yeah. thing. So what about penny stocks then, right? Because a lot of retail investors are actually attracted to them a lot. Uh, is there any reason for that kind of effort to be made uh, so, over there or is, yeah. is it like a complete avoid? I think as a retail investor, first of all, you will be uh, you know, exposing your capital to extreme danger. Hmm. in case if you get attracted towards penny stock and there is a reason because the maybe management is not good earnings visibility is not there or there is something seriously wrong with this company why these are called penny, penny stocks if you do want to venture into it and if you are ready to sacrifice some percentage of your capital in terms of booking losses and coming out and not getting married to the stock then yes you can definitely trade into him but if you ask me for a new beginner and a new investor I would say don't even look at it don't even keep in your watch list the penny stocks I completely agree with Gaurav I think this is a disaster uh, which keeps mm. happening for a value investor and if you are using the term value investor I think penny stock is a complete avoid so yeah. one quotable quote for this <laughs> please go ahead a lot of people say oh this has fallen so much how low yes. can it go yeah. that is yeah. one of the arguments yeah. for yeah. buying a penny surprised. stock <laughs> So the answer to that is a stock which has fallen 90% is a stock which fell 80% and then half from <laughs> there. <laughs> so penny stocks aside, right? So if when you're uh, going out to actively select your stocks, uh, what are the ratios that are uh, that work for a value investor, right? Do you look at dividend yield? What do you actually uh, look at when you're down to doing the actual math? Capital appreciation is the name of the game for a value investor when you are investing in the market. So don't get, uh, you know, kind of uh, blindsided or by the dividend deal. Look at companies or sectors which has a potential to exponentially grow. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned somewhere that commodity or cyclical stocks, mm -hmm. whether one should look at that. I personally think that is one thing uh, which the value investor may avoid because anything which is cyclical doesn't promise you continuous value creation. Mm -hmm. Whereas consumer theme oriented companies, you know, it can be FMCG, it can be pharma even, it can be anything which is playing on the consumer theme where the market is a global market which keeps expanding. Uh, I think that's a very good place to look at value investing. Okay, so then just to wrap it up, any words from the wise for value investors out there? Gaurang, you want to go first? Yeah, so uh, like I said, you know, uh, avoid wide diversification. Uh, be an informed, intelligent and a long-term oriented investor and keep track of what you're doing. And for heaven's sake, don't go and buy stocks just because some uncle, auntie or some grandfather has told you to buy it. And if you know what you're doing, you'll, and this market has always rewarded people from a long-term point of view and it's here to stay. Rajiv? Yeah, you asked a question about which ratio. So there's no one ratio to uh, answer the question, but uh, return on equity across the cycle is a important metric to consider. Mm -hmm. It will show you the quality of the company and the promoters who mm. run the business. Another factor probably to look out for is average growth rate over the years, not mm. focus unduly on a quarter or two, 
but across the cycle. We, I think, uh, you know, if you look at India, we are in a definitely in a growth phase. I think Indian economy is growing based on whose estimate you take, 7, 8, 9 percent. Uh, if that's the kind of growth of GDP and you have on top of that an inflation which is 5, 6 percent, so you're really looking at a nominal growth of around 15, 16 percent. If you pick up a good stock, probably it will outperform this. So you are looking at a situation where, the, where you have a potential of making anywhere between 15 to 20 percent per year consistently on uh, through stock investing. Pick up the stock, don't get swayed by every day's news flows, stay invested, don't panic, don't look at the headlines and exit, don't uh, do anything which is suboptimal. I think investors have a great opportunity of value investing and making money in today's India. Okay, so the stock market is not all evil, basically. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, thanks very Thank much you. for your all time. And Thank thanks you. very Thank much you. for helping our un uh, investors understand value investing so much better. All right, so that brings us to the end of this episode and this season of Crack the Code. I hope the last few weeks have been informative and instructive for you. Until next time, keep watching CNBC TV 18. Focus. Ideal. Innovate. Enable.